You know, whenever I read something like this, something terrible happening in America, racial discrimination, sometimes by people, just hate crimes, sometimes by entire institutions and states and the police force, I am kind of glad to be European. Because we Europeans, we aren't like that. We aren't racist anymore. Us Europeans, even though there might be some people that say racist things every now and then towards immigrants, those are the vast minority. And there's definitely not such a thing as institutionalized racism all throughout Europe. There's definitely not a group that has been systemically discriminated against or has been for a thousand years. So, who are the Romani people? It feels a bit inappropriate on this channel, just give me a second. Choke my finger with that. So, who are the Romani people? Well, first of all, you might know them under a different name. You might know them from the name that's in the title of this video. I put it in the title so people know what I'm talking about. I will not use the term again. The reason being that the term has been used as a racial slur for about a thousand years. So I'm not going to speak it willy-nilly because I'm not in touch with that community. Um, so what I'm going to say is that Romani people, when I'm referring to the group commonly referred to as, you've seen the title. So, who are the Romani people? Well, they're a nomadic people originating from northern India. So that means they started off there and about a thousand years ago they started moving westward. They moved through Anatolia, they moved through the Balkans and now they're, they live all over Europe. There are millions of people of them spread out over all of Europe. Why exactly they decided to leave northern India is not really known. Uh, we know it's about a thousand years ago from genetic evidence. We don't know it from themselves because the Roma people were not good record keepers. So, part of that being is that they are a nomadic culture. That means they lived in groups, in big communities, in big families in many cases, and then they would move to other places. And a lot of them would be smiths uh, and other mobile jobs where they could go to a village, to a country like Austria, go to Vienna, sell a bunch of horseshoes and then move on and live somewhere else. They were nomadic people, they were quite close off people. Oftentimes, in medieval times, not nowadays, uh, they wouldn't no necessarily speak the local language. So they would always be seen as weirdos and foreigners. Because that's how medieval people would see people who they can't speak with. Oh, why are they there? So, um, you could see that the Romani people were quite quickly accused of witchcraft and all other manners of satanic stuff like that. Uh, because, well, if the harvest is bad, well, it must be because of those foreigners walking around. They were speaking a northern Indian language, which is not really comprehensible for the Europeans. And of course, they looked northern Indians. They looked a bit like foreigners. Uh, that's where the term from the title comes from, because they were thought to be Egyptians, which they were not. Well, that's what the people thought for a long, long while. So, um, in Romani culture, it's important to stay with your family, to stay with your own group. That doesn't mean that they necessarily interact with the other groups. Um, of course, they were made to pay quite heavy taxes for most of their history. For most of their history, they were discriminated against. For example, in some countries, they just weren't allowed to come in, they weren't allowed to live there, buy property, anything like that. They weren't allowed to go to school or to speak their language or anything like that. So, it, as you can tell, medieval Europeans, very not nice to people. During this period, the Romani people got the association with witchcraft and evilness and also they gained a reputation as thieves and scammers and liars and all of that. So, where does that come from? Well, um, the story that many people will tell you is, well, uh, they're nomadic people, so they don't really have normal jobs the same, uh, the same way as sedentary people do. Because us Europeans nowadays, we live in big castles and big cities and we don't move around very much. So we have our schools and our established communities all in one place and we're not used to nomadic people. So the myth started going around, which sometimes I guess is true, uh, that the Romani people would just steal anything they like to. Uh, I can imagine this being quite often just made up by someone. Like if I stole my neighbor's horses, but there were Romani people coming through a week ago, I could be like, ah, I must have, must have been the foreigners. So uh, this is classical um, xenophobia. You blame the every bad thing uh, on the foreigners. In modern times, this not, did not get better. Um, of course, with the advent of eugenicism, uh, eugenics, and other discriminatory things, uh, the Romani people were quickly classified as lesser. They're lesser than Europeans. They don't speak the, the European language. They don't have access to the same education. And for some reason, they keep traveling around. They keep moving from one place to another instead of just buying a house and building generational wealth like the rest of the Europeans do. So um, during the, even the 20th century, uh, lots of discrimination happened, especially under the Nazis. As you know, the Nazis killed a lot of Jewish people and the Nazis killed a lot of disabled people and LGBT people and communists and of course Romani people. They killed every minority you could get their hand on. So 
the Romani people were quite decimated by this, which is why in Austria and Germany there is a very small Romani community remaining, because that's what genocide does. In modern times, the Romani people are considered some of the poorest in all of Europe. 90% of the Romani group live below the poverty line. And this is across borders in Europe, be it in Romania, which is by the way completely unrelated to the Romani, uh, be it in Romania or in Ireland, they're all just as poor as each other. So, how, what gives? How does that happen? So, I watched multiple documentaries on this. I'm not an expert. I don't know many Romani people. As I mentioned before, they tend to be kind of insular, so it's hard to get to know them if you aren't really part of their group. Though, of course, the 21st century, you can talk to them on TikTok. Um, so, uh, they have a number of cultural practices that would be uh, strange to Europeans, like for example, uh, wedding gifts, for example. Uh, fun fact, the Romani people never had their own writing system, which is why we don't know why they migrated out of India, uh, because they never wrote it down. Because I guess if you move every six months, it will be pretty bothersome to carry a library with you. One of the biggest problems for the Romani community nowadays is housing. Because where do you live if you move so often? It takes a lot of money to move, unless you don't have a lot of stuff. So, uh, in the documentary I watched, which was about uh, Romani people or travelers as they call themselves in Ireland and the travelers in Ireland um, the way they would do it is they would just live in a camper and then when they would park it on some place some road and when the council shows up like hey do you have permission to live here they just leave and go somewhere else this tends to leave a bad impression with the natives but we have to keep in mind that this is a culture that's very much based on moving from one place to another and who are we to say that they aren't allowed to travel from place to place? So, um, that's a big problem with housing, is that most of them live in insecure housing. Most of them, uh, technically speaking, aren't legally allowed to stay where they're staying, which means they necess don't necessarily have access to sanitation or clean drinking water or anything like that. This is also a problem for education, because um, a lot of Romani people will tell you that when they go to school, instead of being taught, like the rest of the children in school, they're being given stupid tasks. And the documentary I watched from a few years ago, a Romani child was complaining that while the other people her age, other children, are uh, doing math, um, she is giving a coloring book to color in, uh, which seems extremely racist and discriminatory. What are those teachers thinking? Well, they're probably thinking that this is a traveling child that came here a month ago and is going to leave in four months, uh, who wasn't taught anything by the previous teachers for whatever reason. So instead of uh, having to single out this one child and teaching this one child everything, um, instead of doing that, they just focus on the class. And that means that these minority children fall through the cracks. The cracks. That's why a lot of Romani children aren't really taught as much as they should be. The average Romani person, at least in Ireland, um, leaves education by the time they are 16. As you can tell, having lower education standards is not a good thing, at least in our society. Uh, in the Romani society, it doesn't matter as much because they have different values. Um, the problem is finding a job. Because if you don't have the same education standards as other people, in addition to being part of a minority that's already discriminated against, that already has a reputation for not being smart, not having a higher education is kind of a problem. Especially if you're going to plan to move every few months to get to a new job. So. A lot of Romani people have what we would call non-typical jobs. Um, the stereotype is that they're all on social security. I don't know if that's true. As I mentioned, I don't know any Romani people. Um, it's all from statistics. Uh, what they used to do would be stuff like fortune telling because they already had this reputation as being off the devil. So uh, the, the Romani would just do fortune telling and charge money for that. And I guess that's a solid grift. Uh, so they would do a number of small jobs that can be done uh, in a mobile way, different trades. And this is where more stereotypes come in because um, the way a lot of Europeans interact with Romani is because some of them are beggars. So sometimes, some of them, uh, the, the bad ones, uh, will just go to a European city and ask people for money. Uh, I had this experience, I was on a train and there were two girls and they both had Gucci clothing on and they both spoke in broken German about how they are definitely Ukrainian refugees but they weren't, because they didn't speak Ukrainian. Uh, and they asked people for please some money. And at that point I was like, really? And I spoke to them for a bit and yeah, it turns out they were Romani people, which nothing wrong with that. Asking me for 10 euro if you're wearing Gucci clothing, well, I'm on my way to sell my body so I can keep on the lights, felt a bit insulting. 
So that was my initial reason for making this video is why why are the Romani people like that? And then I looked it up and oh, I was being racist. I, I'm being the racist, okay. So just to clarify, a lot of Europeans will interact with these few members of the community and be like, oh, they're all a bunch of beggars and thieves. And that is the wrong takeaway because this is such a small minority of people, okay. Believe it or not, every group has beggars and thieves among it. A lot of people think of Romani as these criminals, these shut-ins that don't communicate with the other culture. They have their own weird languages, they have their own weird tradition, they, they don't work in the same workplaces as we do, and they probably just take money from the safety net. And this prevailing attitude, this uneducated attitude of a lot of Europeans, is why poverty is so um, prevalent in the Romani community, because it's nearly impossible to integrate them. Teachers think it's not worth educating these children because they move away. Um, employers think it's not worth hiring these people because they have less job experience or, oh, well, you can't trust them or something like that. So uh, this reputation of being uh, lazy or uneducated or anything like that uh, is really uh, harming the Romani people uh, in the way that they can live in Europe, which is um, leading to them being the most discriminated against group in all of Europe because of the general misinformation or no information on them uh, in the white European population. And of course, they are the poorest racial group in all of Europe and the most discriminated against. So, what are the solutions for this? Well, I have to find a solution? Is that my job? Oh, I just wanted to talk about this thing I've been reading up on over the past weeks. Um, okay, I, I have this idea. So, we're gonna take all the Romani people and we're gonna designate a piece of land for them and then we tell them, hey, this is the Romani homeland and we send them all there. So, I have found this piece here, it's in the desert. I mean, maybe there are people living there, but I don't think they matter that much. So, uh, I think we should just uh, draw a line on this map and we give this land uh, to the Romani people and we send all of them there. And we can call this country, uh, to affirm that it's a real country, we can call it something like Israel. Like, it is real country. So, uh, we can... Just create a new colonial project and we can export all of the minorities there. Oh, that's colonialism. We're not supposed to do that. It would be incredibly barbaric. It, it would be barbaric and inhumane to displace millions of people already living in this area to create a new ethno state there because the Europeans didn't want the minority anymore. Oh, so that, that means if... Ah, oh, oh, fuck. Someone should have told Israel. They've been doing that for decades and... Oh, how did this video end up being about Israel? Oh, by the way, before you leave, um, I made this new Patreon account. Uh, it's called Vicky Maria. Uh, it's because I have a channel called Vicky and a channel called Maria. And instead of having two Patreon accounts, which is a lot of hassle and doesn't really mean anything, um, there you go. So if you want to send me money again or for the first time, well, that's your own financial mistake to make. I won't tell you not to.